let us now move on to the entity robot poses. As described here, robot poses define sets of joint values for particular planning groups. Now, the use of the word pose might be a bit confusing here as compared to what you did last week, where you saw a pose to be consisting of position and orientation. And indeed, that is the correct definition in the context of Ross applications. Only in this context in MoveIt, we refer to robot poses as sets of joint values. Hopefully, in the newer versions of MoveIt, this section will be renamed. Anyway, let us now define two sets of joint values, one for each robot arm. We click on Add Pose. Then we see this nice sliding bar for each movable joint in our robot 1 group. Notice also that the setup assistant already lets us know if the configuration we are defining leads to the robot being in collision or not. Let us say we want to have robot 1 in a vertical position. So, we just slightly move the shoulder pan joint, so something like that. Then we move the shoulder lift joint by minus 1.57 radians or minus 90 degrees. And finally, we move the wrist 1 joint also by minus 90 degrees and so we have our robot 1 joint configuration defined. Let us name it as R1 up. Let us now define a similar configuration for robot 2. So, we add a pose, select robot 2, enter the desired joint values for the joints and save it as R2 up. Then we can also, for example, click on the show default pose and then click on the move it button, which for now brings the robot to its newly defined configuration instantaneously. But that is because it uses a fake controller to move between the configurations. Once we define the real controllers in the following modules, the motion will look much smoother. Okay. Now the next entity, end effectors. This is where we can define the set of links and joints that define our end effector and also if we want move it to plan motions for our end effectors. In this course, we will not be using move it for this and hence we will leave this section empty. Then we have passive joints where we can specify one or multiple robot joints as passive and move it will consider those joints are not available for planning. This is some kind of a soft lock on the joints. But in our case, since we want to use all joints of the robot arms for motion planning, we will not specify any joints. Then we enter the author information so that it can be updated in the package.xml file. Remember, this whole process we are doing with the setup assistant generates a ROS package. And lastly, we generate configuration files. A whole lot of them, as you can see. All these files contain information about the choices we just made in the previous steps so that the move group node can use it. Let us generate the files and tell the setup assistant that indeed we do not have any end effectors to control via move it and generate our ROS package. Before we conclude, let us just take a quick look at the ROS package that the setup assistant just made for us. We see there is a config folder containing a bunch of configuration files in YAML and SRDF format. And then we see a launch folder containing a lot of launch files. We will focus mostly on the all important move underscore group dot launch file in the following videos and in the process see how it uses most of these files generated by the setup assistant. See you in the next video.